Coming in at number nine is Mike Epps. Mike Epps is funny in everything, okay? You can just imagine somebody like him doing the stuff he does in real life, like in Resident Evil 2 Apocalypse. Yeah, I usually drive a Cadillac. You know, you're a funny motherfucker. You know, he got to be in, um, what's that movie? He got to be in Friday 2 and Friday 3. You know, we booty experts. We bootyologists. You know, he come up with some of the most funniest stuff. And normally people would write material for his characters in the movies and television shows. But every now and then, he sometimes writes the material for his characters in movies and television shows. So he's very good when it comes to that. You know, of course, he was in First Sunday. He was, he was in that movie. And he's been in a bunch of movies. Movies you don't think he would be in, he'd be like, like, um, Hangover 3. Like, who would have thought he would have ever gotten into a Hangover movie? It's like, oh, shit. It's like, he gets into the movies. That one movie where him and Ice Cube teamed up, and they was trying to make their own version of Lethal Weapon. Like, it was actually funny. Because you could imagine the type of stuff that he would do. You know, so, and then he got to be on... Little John's um, soundtrack. <laughs> he even got to be on Ice Cube's soundtrack when he was in time. Come on, Ice Cube. People want another Friday. I mean, the guy just has the talent to do this. He was made for comedy. He just gets people to laugh. You know, every time you see him do something, you could just imagine the type of stuff. Like when he popped up on an episode of Real Husbands of Hollywood and the way he could just play off of Kevin Hart, it's incredible. He gets into the commercials, you know, and he got to be in at least two Resident Evil films. So that tell you right there, there's something good about him being in these movies. Now, he should be rated a little higher because Kevin Hart did kind of, did kind of pass him a bit, you know. But to me, they're like on the same level. Coming in at number eight is Cat Williams. Now, when Cat Williams is not distracted by the fame, the fortune, the money, or the drugs, if he's not distracted by that, hands down, nobody can fuck with Cat Williams. He is by far the funniest motherfucker. I mean, the way he does shit, you could just imagine it. Like, when he got to pop up in Friday 3, you know, that was funny because you could imagine a short dude being a pimp with a curl and in there talking shit. You, you could just imagine that. That could be anybody's little cousin. And the fact that he got to be in um, First Sunday, he got to be in those movies, you know, that scene where he at the church trying to be a pastor. I mean, he's just funny. You know, when he did American Hustle, that was the time that you got to see what he really can do. And then the fact that he was doing impersonations of rappers, you know, making fun of people, and how they take themselves serious, but when he's not fucking with the drugs, the alcohol, and the temptation of fame, you can't touch this man. You know, it's unfortunate that, you know, his career got sabotaged not once but four times. You know, he gets in and out of jail, and he even talks about the stuff that goes on in jail. Most, most comedians that become actors in television and film, and he does voiceover in a cartoon called The Boondocks, perhaps you've heard of it, most people do not even want to talk about what goes on in jail. He does. And why is it kept closed? I probably would compare him to Richard Pryor. Now, I know some of y'all are going to say, no way, no, Alex, not even close. But if you really think about it, he had issues. Cat Williams has had some issues. Cat Williams can admit when he's done something wrong and then turn around and make fun of that situation so other people can enjoy themselves. You know, sometimes it takes guts to actually do that. Coming in at number seven is Dave Chappelle. Now, some of y'all are probably like, why is he at number seven? Well, Dave Chappelle is at number seven because Dave Chappelle came in the 1990s, okay? And he came in an era where people like Jamie Foxx, Martin Lawrence, Eddie Murphy, you know, Chris Rock, Chris Tucker, they were the stars. And somewhere in those late 90s, early 2000s, he surpassed all of them. And he was told by Eddie Murphy he was going to become the greatest of all times. Of course, when you meet your idol, you get a chance to meet your idol. I mean, he got to be in a movie called The Clumps where they had their little face off. Because for so many years, Dave Chappelle was like, I want to I meet Eddie Murphy. 
I want to be in a movie. I want to. I want to meet Eddie Murphy. And Eddie Murphy was like, "Oh, you want to be in a movie? You can be in a movie right now." Of course, there's there's two different sides to that story because you always hear Dave Chappelle, you know, talking bad about Eddie Murphy and Eddie Murphy reacting to it like, "Why on earth are you mentioning my name when you're not telling the true story of what actually happened?" You know, but he did get his shot. He did get to be in the movie. You know, he had a television show. It was canceled. And then he got the television show that he'd been logging for. And that is the Dave Chappelle show. Show that ran for like three, maybe four seasons. It was a shame that the show got canceled. You know, Dave Chappelle could not handle the pressure of what goes on with fame. You know, you make 50000 or $50 million, whatever. That's a lot of money. And for someone to say, I can't take it, um, it's a shock to a lot of people. So when someone finds out you can't handle the pressure, um, that's sad. I mean, he did have his moments. Little John, if you think about it, Little John and the East Side Boys doing impersonations of Rick James, clashing with Charlie Murphy, that's the stuff of legends. I mean, that was in the prime of his career. Then he got into the movies, television shows, Undercover Brother. You know, he, he had his moments. Certain characters that he created. You know, the, the, the crackhead that you see that he make, that he be imitating on the Dave Chappelle show. You know, making fun of the news weatherman. You know, and then of course there's everybody's most favorite one, but don't ever, ever bring it up to certain people with political views because they'll probably get you just for you bringing it up. The one where he makes fun of, where he makes fun of a certain group. And then there's his controversial comeback of 2019 where he made fun of a certain group, which is very, in my opinion, it's very disrespectful to disrespect a group. But that's Dave Chappelle. And if a comedian gets an opportunity to make a comeback, they're going to take the most political thing that you can make fun of and make fun of it. Which, again, you got to be very careful because people watch what you say. People see you. People hear what you say. People point you out, and then you can get into a lot of trouble. And if you're Dave Chappelle, then you probably are happy because you're on the list. And people who love Dave Chappelle, they're fans of him. So they can't wait to see what he come up with next. You know, he's, a good, he's good at sketches. He's good at, you know, taking movies and making fun of the movies. Other people are scared to do it. He's not. All right, coming in at number six is a legend, Richard Pryor. Oh, I love me some Richard Pryor. I mean, as a...